John 20, verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away from the entrance, and she ran to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter and the other disciples set out and made their way to the tomb. They ran together, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and reached the tomb first. He peered in and saw the linen wrappings lying there but he did not enter. Then Simon Peter caught up with him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the napkin which had been round his head, not with the wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. Until then, they had not understood the scriptures which showed that he must rise from the dead. So the disciples went home again, but Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she peered into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had laid. They asked her, Why are you weeping? She answered, They have taken my Lord away, and I do not know where they have laid him. With these words, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not recognise him. Jesus asked her, Why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Thinking it was the gardener, she said, If it is you, sir, who removed him, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabunai, which is Hebrew for teacher. Do not cling to me, said Jesus, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary of Magdala went to tell the disciples, I have seen the Lord, she said, and gave them his message. Easter Day dawns for us as a day of clear and uh, definite joy. This day dawns with a, a chorus of alleluias for us. Of course it does. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Of course, for our gospel storytellers, Easter actually begins with a story of disappointments and even fear and certainly confusion. As the empty tomb is discovered and the first witnesses try to make sense of this event beyond words and beyond human understanding. And it can be confusing for us because our different gospel traditions do tell the stories in really quite different ways. And uh, John's Gospel has its own distinct way of telling that story. But there is, if you think about it, a common pattern, if you like a threefold pattern, at least for Matthew, Luke and John, because Mark's story doesn't seem to quite finish. The threefold pattern is this, that first of all, there is the story of discovery. 
that story of puzzlement at the discovery of the empty tomb. That's stage one. Stage three, to skip over the middle bit for a moment, is the commissioning of the disciples. The creation of that joyful community who can affirm and proclaim the story that Jesus is risen from the dead. And between those two elements of the stories, the story each of the Gospel writers inserts a middle section, which is a story of encounter with the risen Jesus. And for John, it is the story of a woman, Mary Magdalene. And very, in a very pronounced way, the story of Mary is given such prominence in John's story. Mary clearly is representative here of that wider group of women disciples. And there are actually clues, if you read carefully at the beginning of John, that John knows, like the other disciples, the other gospel writers, that there are um, more than, there's more than just one woman at the tomb, because he uses the, the, the plural in, in Mary's voice that we have seen. Um, but it's clearly Mary's testimony that the, is the one that he knows he can rely on and can convey uh, more accurately. And so this, this witness of the women is given prominence even though we know full well and will have, it will have been known over every generation that the testimony of women, of the community of women, will always be regarded in cultures of, of that time as a second class witness. So there's something very distinctive going on here and that um, raising up of the voice of a woman or the women is not unique to the resurrection story because there are um, strong hints through the gospel traditions uh, that Jesus gave women a place amongst the, the wider group of discipleship um, and many of those women are named in the gospel tradition. They're given that prominence of being named individuals. And then of course in the early church and even in the, 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 the church that, the churches that Paul builds, uh, the place of women is distinctively and probably at the time shockingly distinctive in terms of the voice uh, that women are given. So here is a very gendered story and a story which is prominently the story of a woman and the story of the women. But of course it's not exclusively that because John also tells us a story of a man and I'm just holding for the moment with Peter here, the, the man who is named. And of course, we do have the beloved disciple also uh, in the story, but also the story of a man. And we might wonder if the story of the women is so important. Why do we also have the story of a man? And Peter also, like Mary, is representative. He's representative of a group of disciples that are very clearly marked out in the gospel tradition, because Peter, of course, is the most prominent figure amongst the 12 who represent the tribes of Israel. So we have a very gendered story. Why does John uh, uh, tell the story in this way? And why does he include the story both of a woman and a man, women and men? Well, there's two sets of disciples, generally speaking, do have a, a different kind of story to tell. Because the story of the woman or the women is a story of continuous discipleship, of course. Now, again, there are discrepancies uh, of, between the different gospel traditions. And what I'm about to say isn't strictly true of John. But if you take the tradition as, as a whole, that there is this story of continuity that the women are the ones who are there at the cross when Jesus dies who are there at the burial of Jesus and are there at the discovery of the empty tomb. And so therefore are key witnesses to that sequence of events. There is a story of continuous discipleship. Where, of course, and I hardly need to explain it, the story of Peter and the story of the men is one of discontinuity because they are the ones who promised to follow Jesus to the end, to martyrdom even, and who fail to do so, who run away before we get to the end of the journey to the cross. And so 
and maybe this is, I'm sure this is why John knows that we need to hear both stories, because we now need to hear the story of how the men's story, the story of the twelve, is redeemed, is taken apart and put back together. And through the grace and love of God, uh, they are set back on the path of discipleship. So discontinuity and continuity being brought together as the story of the women and the men. Uh, their story is also brought together in John. And I don't think we need to see this as a, a battle of the sexes to make some sweeping assumption that um, female discipleship is always going to be more effective and uh, male discipleship less because there, in the Gospels there are um, women who get it wrong. Uh, think of Martha. And there are men who get it right. And the beloved disciple, uh, who, who is, of course, uh, in the shadows in this story, um, is one who stayed with Jesus uh, to the cross. So it's not simply a battle of the sexes. But by telling the story of a woman and a man, John is able to bring together into one testimony those two different experiences of discipleship. And to me, in that, uh, that, that observation of John telling the story, is a clear indicator of, of what John sees as the good news that we celebrate in this Easter story. That theme that has run right through John, uh, based on love, love and more love, is that theme of unity. That what God is doing in Christ through the crucifixion, through his raising up in glory in that darkly paradoxical uh, image of John, but now displayed on Easter Day, is the community of women and men, the community of those who have stood firm and those who have deserted, brought together in that wonderful vision of what it means to live together in unity as witnesses to the risen Jesus and the power of the love which he brings.